Hello, my name is Tanya Moore and I'm Chief Curator at the Sainsbury Centre. Thank you for joining this conversation between Leiko Ikemura and Katie Hessel. Leiko Ikemura is a Japanese-Swiss artist who works across painting, sculpture, drawing, photography and poetry. Ikemura studied at Osaka University, Japan, then at the Academia de Bellas Artes in Spain. She spent four years as a practicing artist in Zurich before moving to Germany, and she now lives and works in Berlin. Ikemura has exhibited internationally with solo exhibitions at many prestigious museums, including at the National Arts Center Tokyo, the Kunstmuseum Basel, and the Museum of East Asian Art Cologne. Her works are in many international public collections, including at the Pompidou in Paris, the National Museum of Modern Art Tokyo, and the Museum Kunstpalast in Dusseldorf. In 2020, Ikemura received Japan's Minister Award for Fine Arts. The Sainsbury Centre are delighted to present Ikemura's first exhibition in the UK, Usagi in Wonderland, which forms the basis of this conversation. Ikemura will be in conversation with Katie Hessel, a curator, broadcaster and art historian. Katie Hessel is founder of the Great Women Artists Instagram account and podcast, for which she has interviewed artists such as Tasta Dean, Lebena Hamid and the Gorilla Girls, and writers, curators and thinkers such as Griselda Pollock, Olivia Lang and Hans Ulrich Obrist on women artists from across art history. Hessel has presented for the BBC, Dior, Tate, Royal Academy and the National Portrait Gallery, and earlier this year, in 2021, she was selected for the Forbes 30 Under 30 list in art and culture. Leiko Ikemura and Katie Hessel first met to undertake an interview for the book that accompanies this exhibition, which was absolutely fascinating, so I'm delighted that they're coming back together for this public conversation. And with that, I'll hand over to Katie Hessel and Leiko Ikemura. Thank you so much, Tanya, for that wonderful introduction. Leiko, it is such a delight and honour to be in conversation with you again for your first UK exhibition, Usagi in Wonderland at the Sainsbury Centre. This retrospective spans 50 works, ranging three decades of your career, and includes paintings of landscapes to figures to girls, drawings and sculptures in materials made from glass to terracotta, which culminate in themes of nature and the connectivity of life, whether that be humans, animals, plants, minerals or water. I'd love to start with the title of this exhibition. Um, Leiko, tell us, what does Usagi in Wonderland mean? Uh, usagi is, um, in Japanese words, means rabbit or hare, and uh, for me it's uh, this sound, so usagi, is uh, somehow uh, wonderful that I wanted to make this word internationally known. And uh, as an origin of, for the mythology in you know, old time, ancient time, but also in our time, and something from the nature. And this in a combination of uh, Alice in Wonderland, I think uh, the, um, our longing for something else and our longing for another world, I thought this could be um, challenging but also attractive for the viewers and the visitors. Totally. I mean, I love this idea, especially in the last, I guess, you know, couple of years that we've had this idea of wonderland and this idea of escapism mm -hmm. and I think your work when you enter this exhibition really offers that whether it be the sculptures or the drawings or the paintings it offers this other world and so what does the word wonderland mean to you? Well um, this another word and also in a search of uh, unknown journey somehow and I so to this, uh, my world is also for many people unknown. And uh, I wanted to share, not only showing my work, but I really would like to share my world, um, my philosophy, creative uh, uh, works and uh, paintings, sculptures. This is also, uh, I think, it's a kind of wonderland. Yeah, it totally is. And this exhibition, like I said in the introduction, spans so many, I mean, first of all, three decades of your work, which is amazing, but also like your practice, you know, spans bronze, it spans ceramics. 
drawing, painting. I mean, why have you included such a range of mediums in this exhibition? But also, why do you like to work across such a range of mediums? Yeah, because it's this is my life, and all of my life I was never t- pretending to be a one um, branding making artist. For me, it's uh, art is uh, you know never ending process of. Uh, exploring the truth and uh, you know in an artistic way, so that uh, all the media they are interesting enough, and they are also all connected. You know, for example, paintings are very much connected to sculptures. They are also connected to words. As for me, so literature is not something else, and drawings uh, like a uh, writing and. Uh, Drawing, yeah, sometimes as the act, maybe very much connected. So everything is very connected, and that's why, yes. Yeah, and you totally see that in the exhibition. It's the kind of not only the sort of aesthetic, but the kind of, I guess, the world that these plate, these works draw you into. It's so evocative and atmospheric as well. I hope so. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to ask as well, I mean, of course, they're so interconnected, but I'm also fascinated to ask why you work in certain areas in sculpture, certain areas in painting. What is it about sculpture that offers so much possibility, maybe as opposed to painting, which offers something else? Um, I would say like paintings um, and other media, you use the tools. And sculpture, how I do, is um, with working with clay, with hands, it's about sensuality. It's about just touching and um, intuition that you really um, come through your body. And this is uh, what I'm very much attracted to. It's something very natural, our need to touch things, touch words, touch object, creative object out of your hand. I like this idea and also doing this in the, in the process. Yeah, I think the word tactility kind of comes throughout the exhibition as well, whether it be through painting as well, because I mean, these paintings, they offer, the material feels so whole in them. I mean, you can really feel that kind of sensuality in them. What is it about painting that gives you freedom? Yes, um, I st- struggled quite a lot. And also it's a long, long way I'm more, maybe painting more than 40 years and it's a lot um, to uh, study and um, it's really a challenging media but one of these um, small paintings that we see at the beginning in the pink wall they are for me is a kind of a, um, in my evolution of my work is like a child it's kind of a childness, and they are like my own children, and also in my painting they are children. And what I would like to say is also the, uh, the freedom that you also mentioned once. Uh, it's for me the freedom is um, this childlikeness. If you find um, your child in you, and this was my also. Um, looking for this moment of, um, of leaving this pressure of societies and pressure of you should be this kind of structure. And then you found, I, I'm on my way to find more and more this freedom. And this is uh, something very close to us. It's in ourselves. It's interesting. Um, I should add that we uh, spoke a few months ago for exactly. the um, interview mm-hmm. in the book as well. And um, and you said you, you discussed this idea of having actually the power of naivety, the power mm-hmm. of freedom, the power of innocence. And it's really actually stayed with me. And it's something that we should all embrace no matter what age or situation we're into, because I think there is such a a power, mm-hmm. like I said, in that, because actually it gives you such an opened mind of the world and it's so exciting. Yes. No, you, um, I think we talked about that. Yes. And um, this is what I really like that, um, how you express already your child 
what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Yes. Good. How is it seeing so much of your work culminate in one exhibition? I mean, how does it feel to see, you know, nearly 40 yeah. years worth of art making in this show? Well, um, it's 40 years. It's long, long time. But on the other side, it also comes for me like five years or even five days. So the time is elastic. And uh, this feeling uh, I would like to keep. In this sense, I even would say our life is not only our, our life. It's beyond our life. It's, I would say, our life is maybe 3,000 years or you know, and all, or millions of years. So this is the connotation of time I'm very much concerned and interested in. And I think you, um, you totally see that in these works, especially in these paintings at the beginning, in the sense that they are these worlds and I love the kind of expanse of them. I mean, can you tell us a bit about landscape and what that means to you and also landscape in the context of these paintings? Well, this is not a landscape that I can say, I could say, well, this was, uh, you know, in Switzerland or in Japan or so. No, not at all. But of course, they influenced me. But um, in a way, I'm more looking of after the, the images of, of kind of very um, ancient, ancient images of how the worlds would occur or how this... Uh, a world that happened to exist. I sometimes think about that very much, where, you know, like the idea of the genesis. So um, I think we are also very much connected beyond our nationality or culture. We might have something um, very common. And this is uh, this image of uh, uh, origin, origin as a landscape. So in our in our life, yeah. in ourselves, you know what I mean. Totally, and I just love this idea that also the the word landscape can mean so many things. Yes, it can mean sort of geographical mm. place, but it can also mean landscape within ourselves or the landscape that we choose to write mm. on this world as well. Yes, and the landscape uh, is all over. I mean, it's your face is also landscape, and what we are talking is also landscape, and then everything is uh, turned to be beauty. And so with these works, um, did you say, sorry, just to kind of what you were saying earlier about the mm -hmm. horizon line. Do you want to t talk on that yes, as well? Yes, um, I'm grown up just close to the sea. And um, my um, rem remembering of my childhood is always this horizon. It was, uh, you know, brilliant for me. If this world means always, not always a happiness, I imagined another possibilities beyond the horizon. So the horizon is one uh, illusion, of course, because we don't find this line, but in our um, um, expectation and also projection, this horizon is just more than a, a line. And so um, my imagination is um, alongside of this uh, brilliant line. It's the most beautiful line in the world I have ever seen. And, uh, and this is a sometimes, um, you know, main structure of my paintings. And uh, fine enough, and also very curious enough, if you take a seat and just to pull the line, you have the world. You know what I mean? If you... It's, yeah. it's so... A kind of magic, and uh, you know, here I have just a sheet of paper, you know, and I do the one line, and you have the word, you know. That's <laughs> so yeah. this simplicity, and I like that. I was always concerned about the space. How can I create the space in the painting? And this simplicity was maybe one of them um, discovering for my for my art department, which is very simple. It's not only me that says that, but of course I do in my way. And these two paintings that you see, they are quite recent, and they developed after this line 
um, that the horizon started to make uh, undulation, you know, so waves. And um, um, I was always watching the sea. And the sea is so very emotional things. So the sea is like, like, like us. Let's get angry also, you know, very calm, very peaceful, but then, you know, start to be very nervous. So there's a lot of this phenomena which I observed. And this is also happening in my paintings. So it's the horizon started to make undulation because they want to create something. These two paintings are just this moment, I would say. Yeah, I love this idea that, you know, it also seems like this kind of hybrid of land and sea, but also day and night yes. as well. Yes, beautiful. I think this hybrid idea, I like that. Yes, yeah. it's not only one, it's many aspects. And then now it's, we are in a very nice time to be able to allow us this ambiguity, this between things, you know, which I really like think it's very important. We lived until now either black or white. And I think Sarah, we are now in our living in an epoch um, that we can allow us much more, you know, uh, between things. And um, this is so, so rich. Yeah, it's the power of fluidity, exactly. isn't it? And I'd now love to come on to the figures as well, because the figures for me, although they're evidently figural in the sense that they are also this hybrid between animals and humans which I love as well and also mm. the landscape I mean the fact that this work here standing figure two from mm -hmm. 1991 I mean I love the way the figure just kind of stains mm -hmm. the landscape and it's as one with them I mean can you tell us about painting figures into your work when did this come into your work? Well the figures are also you know ourselves I think it's this uh, topic it's our concern, and uh, always in the art world, it was, and also this human being and space, the simple structure, and um, uh, many artists, um, you know, explored on this uh, aspect. I think it's a figure um, was main, mainly meant um, human body, but for me, it's uh, figures could be even more. It means for me the creatures. It's a kind of livings, all livings, so important for me and for, for us too, now more than ever, because we are confronted with some, you know, kind of crisis. And um, because um, I think the, the humans were maybe a bit too arrogant to think we are the, maybe on the hierarchy and the top position, but this pole position is now. I think, in, in danger, you know. And uh, I think it's with our chance to think about that. And uh, this is why I always, uh, you know, um, making the creatures in the middle of the space, in the middle of the painting. And I love this one, move from 1993. Again, it's that kind of, uh, the, the, the childlikeness is in there as well, that excitableness. Yeah, and also you can see all the um, a bit uh, awkward figures it's kind of animals-like and human-like. And not, I was not this human and animals, but the more we have this in our body. So we are somehow also, you know, this animalistic things as well. So, and if we observe the uh, animals, they have a lot of humanity, you know. This is so weird enough. Even they are more human, more generous, <laughs> you know. This is one of my favourite paintings of oh. the exhibition uh, called Landing from 1998 mm -hmm. to 99. I mean, I'd love to, what I love about this work is the kind of, again, the hybridity of landscape, uh, mm -hmm. seascape, figures and animals and this idea of movement mm -hmm. and dance. I mean, how important is movement in your work? Yeah, I think it's even stillness is movement. It's, yeah, this yeah. is really, um, if I want to be still and I'm standing and I feel zen, it's a small vibration. Do you, do you know that? If I want to be still, I feel really this tiny 
a vibration, and this is for me the most、um, exciting. So the stillness is movement as well. It's part of movement. Everything is moving, even if I think, if I see it, and,、um, beautiful day, you don't see any any cloud, and and just a blue sky, and suddenly. You never notice, but you see it's a small, tiny bit of cloud, and then you don't. There is no notion of moment, but then suddenly you observe some something that's happening and it's moving. And I really like this as a metaphor of the moving. Moving, it's moving is also for me transformation. What I love about this exhibition is the fact that also. It spans so many mediums, but I know that drawing was really kind of your first point of entry with art、mm-hmm. in the eighties、uh, when you were living、yes. in Spain. I mean, tell us about、um, how you kind of came to drawing, and and, and what time in your life you, were you doing drawing? Well,、um, drawing is very immediate, and you know, this is what I really、um, think. It could be elementary. It was not only Dura and、uh, Michelangelo; they are all the very good artists that I appreciate. They also、um, did、uh, very great drawings, and this is、um, essential because it's、uh, your rhythm, it's your body, it's your thought. So the thought and your body they come together, and、uh, this is what's happening without、um, any construction. So the drawing is so honest, and this is、uh, why I already started with the、uh, drawings, drawing, drawings, and this was also、so, um, this act,、uh, which uh, um, many artists also practice、uh, with this media. And after that,、um, from this、um, drawings, I could start to do a painting or. Other media, sculptures, or even film. You know, if you see the Krosawa's film, which is great, he was. But also, he did an amazing,、um, beautiful drawings for his、uh, films and sketches. They are ready. I don't know if you have seen them. If you go to Tokyo, I will. Yeah, I will advise you and also show you where you could you could see them. And so it's a.、Um, um, Also for me, for the other things, and also I would like to talk about the poems. It's maybe what I do. It's not a literature, but more a part of my creativity. It's very important. It's like a. It's almost you know in Japanese we say kaku for writing. We say also kaku for、um, calligraphy or drawings. Yes, and a painting. So this word means that、uh, so many aspect. So the, for me, it's a drawing, making drawings and a, a painting, and writing is sometimes one. Yeah, I love the fact that you know writing is just like calligraphy, and that idea that you know it always starts with the pen, no matter. What way,、yeah. in a way? But I mean, you know, you mentioned these references from Tokyo. I mean, in the eighties, you were living between Switzerland and Spain, and then you moved to Berlin. How have these different places informed your work? I mean, do you find that you? I mean, of course, we're all citizens、mm-hmm. of the world, but you know, how have these? How have living in these different places and the source materials that you've kind of got from them? How's that informed the work that you do now?、Um, unconsciously. And not always.、Uh, I'm thinking about now. I'm living in Germany, so I will、uh, treat a German、uh, aspect or problem or、uh, politics or so.、Um, but it's uh, like a, a wizard,、uh, many aspect of the countries. For example, when I started to study in Spain,、um, I was very happy to、um, to be a. To turn to be somebody else, some aspect in my、um, being, discover my otherness. You know, it's a, we have a lot of possibilities, and、um, we are conditioned by culture and、uh, education by parents and social condition. But I could free、uh, of this and、uh, 
for the first time. And then for me, it's a, like it's a light, um, you know, Mediterranean light. And also, how can I say, also the tradition of the culture, the language, the music, and the people, the gaze of the men, women. I found so many um, beauty and fascinated. And this is kind of resource. And then, even I reject when I was a, yeah, very, very young, I wanted to be not only in an, an Japanese, you know, um, but I started to appreciate much more later, but really to my country and the richness of our culture. And so, you know, it's so not always at the same time. I discovered Japanese culture much later, and now I'm also seriously studies the, uh, the culture um, where and in which I grown up. Yeah. And also Switzerland, yeah. And so. also I think what's so fascinating is that you lived in these certain countries at such pivotal times. I mean, Japan post-war, mm -hmm. um, Spain during the Civil War, um, Berlin when the, the wall mm -hmm. was coming down. I mean, it's it's incredible that you've experienced these such pivotal historical events in a yes, way. Yes, this is really weird, but also, <laughs> but also uh, great because, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing because when I started to study, it was 68, a uh, counterculture revolution, and, uh, you know, while well, the university, we, you couldn't study because uh, it's very, every day is a strike. And uh, so I was in the middle of this uh, in the moment, and I'm um, existentialist, and um, a lot of ideology, um, yeah, conflict. And, and then I lived also my hippie time, with long hair, <laughs> long, <laughs> long skirts, and so so I was completely hippie too. And then when I went to uh, Switzerland, it was a punk time, you know. So in the, the uh, beginning of the eighties, so the punk music and um, always always this kind of rated cultural system was so um, exciting. And it was in Switzerland, in the time where the Swiss young people denied this uh, material richness. And so, uh, yeah, so many things happened. And this time I started to be an artist already um, very consciously. So uh, it was, um, I was maybe fortunate because in this, in this fashion and the mood, the people were more open. And so it, usually the Swiss art world is very narrow, but then in the beginning of the 80s, in the middle of the trans avant-garde year, I was uh, maybe uh, um, suddenly in the middle of uh, a lot of uh, uh, events and also concerts, exhibitions. And so I had my first chance, my, my first debut in Zurich. So I started me 40 years ago as an artist there. And then I went to, to Cologne in the time of also um, new wild painters, mainly male painters, but uh, also, wow, this was an amazing time as well. And, uh, and then I was invited to, uh, to be a uh, professor in Berlin at the university. It was 90, the beginning of 90 or the begin before the 19th, the, the war fall. And so um, many very interesting mo uh, moments, yes. And I'm fascinated with this idea of language as well. And, and how has language come into your work? I mean, it, it seems so, I mean, obviously it's so universal, your work, but I love the fact that, you know, unlike a lot of people in the world, you can speak so many languages. I wonder if that comes into the work at all. Well, I don't speak in any of these languages uh, perfectly, but um, even my Japanese is not any more good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, You're no. excellent. But I'm, um, uh, you know, I think language is, uh, it's not about perfection, it's about communication. 
and about the sound, about the music. And if we capture this, then I lose also the shame to be not so perfect. And this was the beginning of my, um, you know, learning languages. If I don't think about it, I'm learning, it's more it's like a singing. And it's, um, I don't know. But also, I love languages in a way like, uh, I know, in literature, but also just uh, words, between words. If uh, I, I'm always find, finding the words of what I want to express. And this process of this uh, between words, um, there was one space between when I want to say something, I don't find the words. And this tension is so interesting. This is for me the um, starting points. For me, the literature is more maybe complex, but the poems is something, it's not, you don't have to say everything what you want to say. So it's my imperfection, it's my chance. How wonderful. And then I would love to come to the language yes. of sculpture that you use, this fantastic image of the installation of the exhibition, which is set against a bright green background. I mean, I'm fascinated to know also why you use these such bold colours uh, as sets for the work. But also, I mean, when did sculpture come into your oeuvre? Well, um, the installation is another thing. Um, well, by the way, I have to confess that um, the Teams of uh, Sainsbury Center and the museum, of course, Tanya Moore and uh, uh, Vanessa Tochil, Simon Kennel, they are such a great um, support for me. So that in the time of COVID, we could not travel. So uh, we did this installation through Zoom and FaceTime. And uh, this is great experience. Uh, of course, if I would be there, I would have been there. Maybe I changed a little bit of the color. But I think this um, option of the color, uh, for me, it's a um, space making. It's a not. It's no decoration at all. And so that the pink. Um, um, area and then there's a blue, dark blue area and a green area. Something so that uh, I wanted to this uh, once again coming back to the uh, Wonderland. This exhibition is Wonderland. So, but I wanted to um, make um, spaces one kind of a, not meaning but a special spaces for every media or this sculpture series, they are like evolution of uh, forms, you know, transforming. And I wanted to give them a space and protect it. Yeah, I love this idea of protection. I mean, why do you choose to exhibit these sculptures in sort of uh, together almost? I mean, it almost feels like some kind of altarpiece or like you say, this world that you're en you enter into them, they all have their own personalities. These sculptures. Yeah, they, I hope so. They have personalities. They are like uh, creatures. And uh, this transformation is that what I would like to show in this space <clears throat> so that um, they, one to the other, they have something to do. The one form trans transforms and then and it develops to the next formation. And this, you could see, it, uh, you know, like a, a, a kind of a panorama of the creatures. But then we look at them individually and I love, you know, they almost look like these kind of deities or royalty or they don't look, they look contemporary at the same time as being ancient. They look both, you know, West and East. They look so many, they have so many beautiful cultures that culminate in one. I mean, why did you use terracotta um, for this particular series of works? Well, you know, terracotta, it means like a, a earth. It's a material, it's a earth. And a, I love this idea that we are in so much uh, in a direct connection to the, to our earth and uh, this uh, fundamental material is the um, the clay the, that you can take the piece of clay in your 
in your hand. It's like you are touching the old, you know, huge earth. Somehow I like this imagination and a connection. And I think it's a, the clay, it's the materials that, you know, very from the ancient time until now. And it's also uh, awkward enough. <clears throat> when I started in the 80s, nobody worked. And so people were looking at me like, oh, are you are doing pottery, like a bit, <laughs> like <laughs> despectively, you know. <clears throat> and now I have to say, everybody is working now with with ceramic. It's now it's a yeah exciting. It's so exciting. Yes, <laughs> they discovered it too. <clears throat> but I was one of the first, and um, well, of course, there's a other from China, and so Picasso used also, but it's quite a, another time. And then we come to this section of the mm -hmm. exhibition, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, these works on the, I mean, tell us about, obviously you mentioned that different areas of the, mm -hmm. as we can see, different areas of the exhibition are with different background. What does this blue place mean to you? And why did you choose to put these works here? Well, um, I thought maybe um, at the end, it was like, a, you know, three decades. And um, I think at the end, it's so, so huge landscapes. They are quite recent. And I'm very much concerned about also the cosmology and our idea, its connection to the cosmic. And we are now in this turning point. It's from the earth to the cosmic. And the dark blue, it su suggests and also um, this idea of space, of nothingness, space of open endlessness and uh, this is why and also because of the three large paintings they have colors they were illuminated in this color even more lively more vivid and then um, this is why i have chosen this blue i love how you it looks like you're entering different sort of realms in the ocean as mm. well. You know, you enter these kind of different worlds and some, suddenly it's darker, but actually they really accentuate different areas of the painting as well. I mean, <clears throat> can you tell us about this painting that's in front of yeah, us? Yeah, this is about Genesis. It's about um, how this world had been created. And also, like you asked me at the beginning of our conversation about the landscape. So we say in German, Ur-Landschaft, ur uh, I don't know how you translate it into English. It's Ur is so very origin, you know. It's a, almost the, the most ancient. And um, I, as I told you, I believe in this ancientness. And it's so, um, like for example, archaeology is for many people's archaeology is something very far away. But for me, it's not. Archaeology is now. And this is the nowness of everything. The time is elastic, we told. So it's uh, about this ancient time to be to bring it to our now nowness. And as for me, it's also our time. But I imagined how this world has been created. This was a moment of. Uh, this is why I don't know the title of the painting is that. Genesis or um, Zarathustra could be, you know, from the Nietzsche's Zarathustra. I did also the series of the large paintings under this uh, title. Yeah, I love how also <coughs> when you look into the landscape, you look, you know, closely and suddenly a figure appears right at the front of it as well. But I mean, I'm fascinated. How does <coughs> kind of philosophy come into your work as well? Well, um, in my way it's a philosophy it's uh, not this written for and i think it's a philosophy it's the thought that you believe in and also philosophy could be um praxis in art i think it's this is me my interest um being an artist it's, I'm not only poet, I'm also philosopher somehow, but I can't describe what. You know, it's, a, it's this is a Usagi in Wonderland. This is my philosophy, you know, that you, I want to invite everybody in. 
into my world. Yes, this is also my philosophy. And obviously we've seen the paintings, we've seen the sculptures, but also in this exhibition, we see poetry and we see these glass sculptures. I mean, tell us about these glass sculptures because these are, these are much more recent. These are the most recent works yes. of yours. Um, the glass sculpture, it's um, also um, the, so something happened during this uh, very hard COVID time of, you know, self-retreat. And uh, for me, it was okay um, being home, not traveling. I think I have learned a lot. And also it was a very interesting time um, that happened to us. Uh, my time is in the studio are much, you know, more concentrated. And uh, at the beginning, at the first year, really I enjoyed it. And I can't say enjoy it because I'm, I'm so sorry for the people that they couldn't enjoy it. And so I, I have to be careful about words. But as uh, just working, I mean, in my studio, I was very concentrated and do also the things that I could not do because I was too busy before. And then uh, the glass sculpture happened because at the same time I was invited to work in Murano in Venice at a very <coughs> famous workshop. And then as I was not able to travel, I started to work in my studio, the glass sculptures, with the help of the one um, artist. And our collaboration was very, very, very nice. And also he was so a fantastic person and um, he helped me really a lot so I could realize in my way to do all these sculptures is uh, made homemade yes <laughs> my studio and how was it working with a new material had you ever worked with glass before no I mean uh, I was always thinking about that and I also started to work with uh, um, mosaic and the mosaic is of course a part Partly, it's a, it's a glass. And I, of course, I worked with ceramics. And ceramics glaze is glass as well. So I, I can't say it's really, really the first time. But I, I loved this. I was fascinated by the transparencies, the color, and the special um, you know, volume, the volume of transparencies. It's such a contradiction, but... Uh, you know, you can't think, but it's so, so heavy. And um, you can't even, you know, carry it. It's so heavy. So this density and um, the light that is through, coming through, and the details, and also I include in perfect. So that I ask uh, the artist or the collaborator, always ask, do, don't do too much um, to, into the perfection. So, of course, we work together. And um, I, I like, um, you know, partly if the sculpture is not perfectly done. So if I would have done in Venice, it would be completely different. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I love, the, I love how organic it is. And this, this um, installation is so beautiful because you have the, such organicness of the shape of the glass sculpture against the trees. Again, this like idea that culminates in this entire show, which is this no notion of growing and decay and excitement. I don't know, it's, it's the kind of the evolution yes. of landscape, isn't it? And how landscape <clears throat> grows and it dies and it renews. And it, I, I think it's such a beautiful way uh, to end this exhibition as well. I mean, I'm also fascinated to know where did you get your inspiration from during lockdown? Well, <clears throat> I think it's a, also this um, moment of concentration is um, also inspiration. But also, or as a, before, I traveled a lot, which is now I'm very cautious about because of flying, it's a, you know, of course, I know it's a problem. But anyway, that's, um, my journeys are inspirations as well. And also this space is also inspiration, uh, Sainsbury, because it's, uh, the museum is a uh, great architecture. The museum has this nature surround. And this small uh, space that you see now with glass and also behind the uh, huge glass fence, uh, window 
I really loved them. Um, this on Miss Missonin uh, space because it was before um, sold. I should use the downstairs. It's a very beautiful space for the contemporary art. It's really perfect. But since uh, the postponed, my, my exhibition is postponed very um, maybe at least three times. And uh, as not only me, I mean everybody has this uh, problem. But uh, finally, they decided to to offer me this space, and then I thought, yeah, uh, yes, this is also inspiration. And um, thinking of this uh, possibility of the exhibition that's coming, I uh, was um, uh, very persuading. Do something else, you know. So, like including some of my first glass sculptures, and uh, putting in front of the this nature. So the landscape is also created in this way. Absolutely. And in the exhibition, it ends with this fantastic um, painting as well. I mean, tell us about this work. I mean, what is it like to work on such a giant scale? Yeah, yes, this was um, um, also exhibited at, in Tokyo the two years ago before pandemic started. And, uh, and this exhibition is maybe my first and the last, uh, not last, no, never last. <laughs> I think it's um, one of my uh, largest exhibition in my life. It was 2,000, 2000 square meters, it's huge. And um, in the uh, National um, Museum in Tokyo, in the middle of a very, um, a fantastic place in Tokyo, Roppongi, I had opportunity to show um, these paintings. These paintings, um, um, I think I did a huge installation with uh, almost 10, 10 large paintings. I, mean, I have to say, yes, 10. And it, it was like a four seasons. And this is a spring. And I had also other three large paintings like winter and autumn. And um, we have, you know, in Japan, our culture is about seasons. And all the poems is about seasons, you know, like a spring and uh, summer, autumn, winter. And this eternal, um, you know, circle of life. In the circle of life, it's also, of course, of spring is our hope. And this is why I want to end um, this exhibition and start again with this large scale of paintings because it's our hope and because we need it too. It, it was after two years, it was a very strong time. I thought it uh, would be nice, it's, you know, um, the colors, it's um, shining from the darkness and um, so, yes. Yes, this idea of renewal and regeneration and hope and excitement for the future again. It's that kind of inner child like yes. as well. Um, Leiko, I'd love to ask as well, just to sort of round things up. I mean, how how do you want people to not only leave this exhibition, but how do you how do you want them to experience it? Yeah, I think you have told it already. This feeling of renewal <laughs> and uh, feeling yeah. of hope and a feeling of love. This is uh, what I would like to share with you and with uh, all the visitors. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Should we just touch on the outdoor sculpture as well um, for those who have seen the exhibition? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. The Usagi, finally Usagi. And uh, the Usagi sculpture is coming, um, I think, so, in 10 days. And um, we are looking forward to... Uh, Welcoming Usagi and Sainsbury <laughs> and uh, Norwich. I think it's uh, traveling now uh, from Spain. The Usagi is uh, hopping all the world. As um, before, the Usagi was uh, quite famous in Spain because in front of the cathedral in Mallorca and uh, was standing almost all the summer. And um, the, before, it was so... so at the museum, Bath Kunst Museum. And um, so the Usagi is now landing very soon in the UK. And this Usagi is uh, three and a half meters high, and the people can go into, which is wonderful if, uh, yes, the wow. children can go into. 
Uh, I mean, we could also, you know. And um, you will see the light that is from the skirt. The skirt has also many small holes. And also in the, in the rabbit has here, in between the ears, there's one hole. So if you go into, it's not just dark, it's also there is a light from the upper side and also from the you know, surrounding. I'm very excited. Incredible. Leiko, thank you so much uh, for speaking with thank me you. today. Thank you. Thank you very much.